Right, in this video, we're going to see how we can read data from a file into an array. So for this, let's just create a, a quick file there. So you're going to go click on your, your top project, and you're going to right-click and say New File. So go to New File, and you give your file a name. So I'm just going to call my file values.txt, and say OK. And you can see that it creates this values.txt for you. Let's just place a few values there, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. So let's just have, we've got 8 now, let's make it 90, 100, 110. Let's stop at 11 values. Okay, and uh, now if I go to my file, so let's say we want to read from this file, and we want to read all of these integers now into our array. So we're going to declare an array. And I'm going to call it values equals new int. And then let's set the size of this array to be 10. Because normally you won't know how many values are in a specific file. So when we read data from a file, it's very important that you know that you shouldn't go over the amount of values that you can actually save into your array. We'll do that part now. So you'll see there we've got 11 values, but we can only save 10 of them. Okay, so that's my array. And what I need to do here is to just have some sort of a counter here because we're not going to use a, a normal for loop. So I'm going to use a while loop again. So that's going to be my loop control variable starting at i. So the first thing we'll need to do from here is to make a connection to the file. So I'm going to say file, call it file, equals new file. And that file name will then be saved as a text or will be passed in as text there. And the file name is called values.txt. So I'm going to say values.txt. That's the text file I want to read from now. So we can use that simple if statement that says if this file dot exists, if the file exists, then we can start reading from it. So if it exists, then I can make a connection to the scanner class again. So I'm going to sc say scanner input file equals new scanner. Now instead of reading from the keyboard using system.in, we will pass in the file object. Now because this can throw an exception called the file not found exception, we need to have at the top of our method say throws IO exception. Okay, so there we've got throws IO exception. There we've got our, our uh, integer array. We start at position zero, which we'll do now in the loop. Uh, we make a connection to the file or try to make a connection to the file. If the file exists, we pass that file to the scanner class so that we can start reading from it. Now the while loop. Let's get into the while loop quickly. And you remember that there's a method called has next that will help me to read through every element in the file, but not read over the amount of elements that I actually have. So there's 11 lines in this file, or 11 integer values. I cannot read the 12th one. It will throw me an exception or an error. So it's very important here that you use the input file that has next method. But now we've got another limitation. We've got a limitation where we don't know the size of the, the actual values that we're going to have here. So there could be a thousand values in this file. We won't know. Okay, unless you know the file, obviously. But if you don't know the size of the values or the number of values in your file, and you need to declare an array, so you'll set it to a specific size. In this case, let's say you know that the file will be, there will be more than a thousand values there. And so let's say you can make it 2,000 then there, uh, which will make it uh, 2,000 values that you can save into that array. But in this example, let's keep it at 10, because now we know there's 11 there, so I cannot read all of them into the array. Okay, so this is the limitation. Only 10 there, and I need to also check for the end of the file. Okay, so that's the two limitations we need to check for. So then the AND operator here, so this one this one checks for that we don't go over the limit of the file, and the second part here is that we do not go over the limit of your array. So in this case, we're going to say i less than, and again, the name of the array, which is called values.length. So we don't go over... Uh, the length of your specific array. So both of them needs to be true for us to keep reading from the file and or keep saving to the array. Okay, so now in this case, we're just going to say values at the specific position i 
should be whatever we read from the file. So we're going to say input file dot next int because there's integers in the file I want to read integers so this part there is reading an integer from the file so the first time it runs it's going to read the 10 it's going to place the 10 into values i so which will be i starting off at 0 which will get the first index value right so after this one line we will then basically get every single line in the file, read from it, and placing it into the position in the array. But you'll see somewhere along the line, we'll get to the length of 10, and there's still values to read there. But because of the AND operator there, both sides needs to be true for, we, for it to actually keep on reading from the file and placing in values. So whenever you're at the end of the file or you're at the end of your array, this loop will stop and you cannot enter any more values. Okay, and then just remember to also add your I++. This is your loop control variable, I equals zero. Then we test uh, the, the loop control variable there and we increment the loop control variable. So just remember about your loop control variable. After this, we can close our file input file dot close when you work done working with it close your file and now after this while loop we can print out what we saved into that array so let's just use the the enhanced for loop here again so I'm going to say integer value and then use the values array and we print out every single value there so we're going to say system out print line and we print out value so remember value is the name of the variable where we save every single value. Okay, so let's run this quickly. And you can see there it printed out. But it printed out from 10 up until 100. And you can see we left out the last value there. Why? Because our array can only store 10 values. If I made that one 12, which means our array can store 12 values, then the limitation will come into the file there where it can only read 11 values so it will show all 11 but still not throw an error for me or an exception for me because we tested that out on the loop okay so you'll you'll remember that after this line all 12 values is saved as a zero and then when we try reading from the file we read actually all 11 values but the 12th value we didn't read so that will stay as a zero okay and that's it for arrays and files. All right, so in this part, let's just quickly have a talk about string arrays. Uh, before we start creating an array, I want to quickly create a method here. So I'm going to say public static. And let's say this method will return a string array. And we're going to call this one get names. And this one will basically populate our array for us. Okay, so we're going to do the following. We're going to create the string array here. And we're going to say names equals new string. And we're going to say, let's say the size should be 6 in this case. Now in names, I'm going to say names at position 0 should be, let's say, John. And we're going to say names at position 1 should be Peter. And we'll say names at position 2 should be Paul. We can also say names at position 3. So that's the first 4 now equals, let's say, Simon. Okay, so let's say we've got these values. John, Peter, Paul, Simon. Let's just add one more there. So names at position 4 equals Chuck. Right, so there we go. We've got six spaces to store string objects, and we've got one, two, three, four, five of them saved. So a very important thing to notice here is that after creating this one line, every single index value of mine will contain the special value. So actually, in names five, there will be a special value called null. And null just means there's no object at all linked to that variable. Okay, so that's essentially what will be saved in every single index value after just this one line. All of them will contain a null value. Okay, remember with when we were working with integer arrays, all of them contain zeros. So with strings or any other object type, we will get a reference of null there. 
Okay, so this is very important. And notice here, we've only set 0, 1, 2, 3 up until 4, where actually it goes to position 5. And then we're going to say return this names array of ours. Okay, so this return statement then returns the array called names with the first five values set and the last value is not set. Okay, so let's create our array at the top. Let's call it names as well. Equals, and now instead of assigning my array, array, I can actually just go and call get names, which will create a new array for me of size six with a few values set and then return it to me. Okay, so now this names variable as well as this names variable there will point to the exact same array. Now let's print out this one quickly. So I'm going to say for integer i equals zero, i less than names.length, same way as we do with the integers, i plus plus. Now let's say I want to print out now every element in this array. So if I if I print this out, we can just say names and at a specific value or a specific index value of i. Okay, so that will basically print out every element in that array for me. Let's just see the printout there. And there you can see clearly, there's the array. It's John, Peter, Paul, Simon, Chuck. But you can see the last value there is in fact a null. Now let's say that we do not want to print out just the names, but I want to go to a name and I want to print out just a specific character. So I can use the character at method and the character at method also needs an index. So let's just say a zero there, which means that names i, if the loop runs for the first time position zero, then it's names zero, which will be John. I'm going to go to John and I'm going to get the character at position zero. So it will actually just return the J and the P and the P and the S and the C. Okay, so let's run this one quickly. If I run this now, Ah, you can see a very, very nice exception error message that we get there. And we call that a null pointer exception. So the problem here is the first uh, five values there to get the character position at position zero is easy because we've got values there. But the last one is uh, at position five is a null value. And you cannot get on a null value a character at position zero because it's not a string. It's a special value called null. So we can't do that. So this is very important to, to realize in, when you're working with strings that you first need to test whether that value is not a, a null value. If you want to do some calculations or some um, use some operators on your specific string or whatever object you're using. So in this case, I'm just going to say if names at that specific position where we are in the loop is not equal to null, then I know. I can get these values. So I'm just going to cut this one. You can use control X to cut it and then paste again. All right, there we go. So now instead of just printing out, I'm just first going to test if it's not a null value. Yes, then print it out for me. So now if you print it out again, you'll see that error is gone. And we've we only have the first characters J P P S C of those that's not null. Now it works 100%. So you can see that we only printed out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The sixth one is ignored because that one will have a null value.